Kellogg's is a name that is linked with breakfast cereals all over the world. We always start our day with a nourishing Kellogg's breakfast. The Kellogg Company was the pioneer of the famous and widely loved cornflakes. Even though now there are several different brands producing the breakfast cereal, the original cornflake cereal was the invention of two brothers, William Keith and John Harvey Kellogg. It all started with a surprising motivation and an accident. But against the odds, the cereal has survived and thrived for over a century now. Welcome to Planet Biz. John Harvey Kellogg was born on February 26, 1852. He was a medical doctor with a degree from New York University Medical College. For 67 years, John worked as the director of Battle Creek Sanitarium, a health resort located in Battle Creek, Michigan. Battle Creek Sanitarium was, at the time, a world-renowned health establishment which was founded by members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and, as such, was run on principles advocated by Seventh-day Adventists. From 1876 until the time of his death in 1943, John Harvey Kellogg, who himself was a conservative Seventh-day Adventist, helped the sanitarium to flourish and become a preferred healthcare destination for the rich and famous. Born on April 7, 1860, William Keith Kellogg, more commonly referred to as W.K. Kellogg, was the younger brother of John Harvey. He dropped out of school in the sixth grade at the age of 13 and has been called stupid by his teachers. When he was 14 years old, he ventured into selling brooms as a salesman for his father's broom business. Unfortunately, he failed at that too, making matters worse for him. Eventually, his brother assisted him by giving him an unofficial job at the sanitarium. Will's job at the sanitarium may have been referred to by several titles. Sometimes, he was called a business manager. However, for most of the three decades he worked at the sanitarium, Will was hardly anything more than an errand boy on a salary. He worked under and was mostly overshadowed by his world-renowned, learned brother who ran the sanitarium in a manner comparable to modern establishments today, making it one of the most attractive healthcare locations of its day. Will did everything from arranging funerals to bookkeeping to fixing things around the sanitarium for around $25 a week. His most exciting task included chasing down the insane when they escaped. The two brothers practiced the beliefs of their church, such as vegetarianism. John especially had strict values that he derived from the ideology of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. For instance, apart from not eating meat, John also didn't take alcohol or caffeine. John was an advocate of a health movement that he called biological living. This involved exercising and bathing more, and eating less meat and more whole grains. Sometimes, Will assisted in food preparation. He helped develop a moist and tasty breakfast treat made from wheat dough pressed into large sheets and cut into square servings for the patients. One fateful night, Will accidentally let the dough sit uncovered and found that by morning it had dried out. When he ran a rolling pin over it, it flaked up. Instead of throwing the flakes away, he decided to put them in the bowl and serve them. The patients loved the crunchy stuff and demanded more. After this, the brothers experimented on other different types of grains including corn. In 1896, a patent for flaked cereals and the production process was issued to the Kellogg brothers. Suddenly, a light went on in Will's head. He started a mail-order business to supply patients with cereal after they went home. In the first full year of sales outside the sanitarium, he sold 113,000 pounds. The pair started a company known as Sanita's Food Company in 1897. The company produced the cornflakes for sale. At that time, breakfast could be anything. For the rich, breakfast could be steaks, eggs, chicken, cold cuts, etc. The poorer class often ate porridge, farina, and other boiled grains. Anything that could be eaten for lunch or dinner could also be eaten for breakfast. This eating habit was cited as a leading cause for the cases of indigestion that was widespread among Americans. So, with the help of John Harvey Kellogg's popularity, the brothers promoted cereal as a healthy food that could serve as a breakfast substitute. The original Corn Flakes recipe may not be so popular among people today. It had no sugar or added flavors. True to its purpose, the breakfast cereal was very bland. To solve this problem, 
William had the idea of adding sugar to the recipe. John thought that this was a terrible idea. While William was more concerned about the popularity of the cereal and making more sales, his elder brother John didn't care about sales. In fact, he would give out the recipe for free and allow people at the sanitarium to observe the entire process. John would tell people that his main concern was not money. In his words, I am not after the business, I am after the reform. John didn't take it well that William had plans to add sugar to the cereal, just as William wasn't happy about John giving out the cornflake recipe for free. This caused a rift between the two brothers. In 1906, William decided to create his own company to mass produce the breakfast cereal. William Keith Kellogg took a bold step and opened up his own company in 1906. That William was able to muster up the resolve and courage to get out from underneath the shadow of his brother and go on his own despite his brother's objections is a noteworthy achievement on its own. It had a lot of accompanying risks of failure, but he decided to do it anyway. William named his company Battle Creek Toasted Corn Flake Company. Because many people had expressed their interest in the cereal and it was already patented, it's easy to believe that the business would be a sure thing for William. Unfortunately, that was far from the case. Despite the patent, several businessmen found a way to produce the cereal without infringing on the patent. His brother giving out the recipe for free didn't help matters. By 1912, over a hundred cornflake brands had entered into the market. One of the competitors was a former patient at the sanitarium named C.W. Post. Charles William. Post was one of those who had observed the process of making cornflakes while he was at the sanitarium. He then went on to mimic the process and became the creator and seller of grape nuts. Post was just one of the many competitors. Will had to find a way to stand out from the other brands in the saturated market. One way he managed to stand out was by adding sugar and flavors, like malt and salt, to the cereal. Even though the cereal experienced its initial success as a health food, Will had an instinct that it would do better as a breakfast food if it was sweeter and more flavorful. But he needed to do more because most of his competitors were doing the same thing. Will followed his idea up with several advertisement campaigns and continuous improvements on the recipe. Just about a year into the business, tragedy struck Will's company. The factory was destroyed in a fire, and he had to take out loans from the banks to rebuild. William Keith Kellogg was an advertising pioneer. The amount of money Will spent on advertising was unheard of. Other companies may have considered him crazy. One of the company's incredibly successful ad campaigns began in 1907 and was known as Wink Day. Wink Day was Wednesdays, and women were encouraged to wink at their grocers and see what they got. This act was quite risque in its day, and every Wednesday, the company offered a free box of cereal to ladies who did it. The daring nature of this campaign appealed to customers and sales shot through the roof. In addition to various advertising efforts, Battle Creek Toasted Corn Flake Company was the pioneer of cereal offers. For years, they gave out the funny Jungle Land moving picture booklet to anyone who bought two packets of cornflakes. Will's determination and commitment to advertising was revolutionary. As Will once said, the fire is of no consequence. You can't burn down what we have registered in the mind of the American woman. This makes it easy to understand why Will's motivation to advertise remained strong even in the face of a fire. He knew exactly what the driving force of his business was. Apart from advertising, Will was also a pioneer of other business methods that are conventional today. For instance, the company was one of the first brands to use a mascot. The original Corn Flakes mascot, which is still in use today as a symbol for the start of the day, was Cornelius the Rooster. Eventually, Will changed the company's name to Kellogg's when they started producing more products other than just Corn Flakes. Kellogg's was also one of the first food producers to put the nutritional values of their food on the food packages. By 1917, the company was producing 9 million boxes of cereal per day. At its 75th anniversary in 1981, Kellogg's had 47 plants in 21 countries. Before he died, William Keith had become one of the wealthiest men in America within just two decades of founding his company. Today, Kellogg's Corn Flakes are one of the most popular breakfast cereals all over the world. For more inspiring business stories, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. This is Planet Biz.